While the existing 911 system has been a success story for more than 30 years, it's been stretched to its limits as technology advances. A significant overhaul is needed for it to meet our emergency needs and to take advantage of the advances in technology to further enhance emergency response capabilities. This represents a significant commitment in staff, work effort, and research and development by the private sector to ensure public expectations are met. All recognize that this is not a trivial task, and lives depend on the success of those efforts. NINA, the National Emergency Number Association, has developed the Next Generation's Partners Program to provide stakeholders a forum for industry leaders, public sector and private sector, to help shape the future of Next Generation 911. The move to the Next Generation 911 is a monumental task. But the vision, including multimedia, dynamic routing, expanded location information, and other features is well worth the effort. Some have said it is similar to the conversion from analog to digital television. After extensive planning sessions at least twice each year, participating industry representatives come together to put their equipment and applications through its paces through predefined, standards-based, structured test scenarios designed to demonstrate interoperability in a next-generation environment. Service providers, competitors in many cases, and public safety agency representatives join together for a common purpose, to ensure the operational integrity and interoperability in a next generation world. It is a true industry collaboration event known as ICE. Recently, 22 companies gathered at the AT&T Learning Center in Dallas to conduct the fourth of these events. Sunday afternoon provided time to set up a variety of equipment that would be tested among manufacturers over the next three days. Indeed, Next Generation 911 introduces many new features and functionalities to enhance emergency response capabilities, and each ICE event is designed to test a set of functionalities. A core aspect is the change in the way emergency calls are routed. This ICE event tested complex scenarios for call routing. Nate Wilcox, chair of the ICE Steering Committee, led the kickoff discussion for the three-day event. This has turned out to be, as you could probably all attest to, likely the most complex event um, of all the ones that we've had to date. The, uh, we've had, I think it was over 30 conference calls. Uh, I'm estimating 50 to 60 hours of work just put into planning and the initial, uh, the initial event itself. Brian Fonts, Nina's chief executive officer, provided challenging remarks to participants. This is an important opportunity for all of us to come together to see how our investment in time, talent, energy, and money to develop products and services work together. It is important that we recognize that only, not only does technology have to work together in concert with new technology, but also with existing technology. And having these opportunities to do the dry run or test, if you will, provides invaluable information so that you can ultimately produce the products and services that best serve our nation's call centers. At ICE, vendors and manufacturers work together to discover technical issues and problems over a concentrated three-day period and gather results to benefit the industry. The information is used by the NINA ICE Steering and Planning Committees in the development of future events. Jason Horning chaired the ICE4 Planning Committee and moderated the tasks for the three-day event. Today's plan, um, if you, once we get back uh, onto the network here, is to complete any outstanding bilaterals that you have. And we're going to um, run that for as long as it takes. Um, we've laid out the scenarios in, in certain configurations, so if we do not uh, complete all the bilaterals, it will muck or mess with the uh, uh, scenarios a, a bit. So I really want to make sure that um, you know, you're probably familiar with the bilateral test uh, um, completion status. I really want to make sure all those uh, cells get f filled in green before we move into tomorrow's scenario testing. Um, because if not, I'll, be, I'll have a very late night trying to get all configurations set up again. 
Participating companies shared a variety of views on why they participate in ICE. They provided views on the value of this program, which allows vendors to better understand the interoperability requirements between their products and the products developed by other vendors. We found it very valuable to um, to really kind of work through the um, you know the I three specification. Um, more, more thoroughly because there's, there's, you know, as, as we get into more uh, complex protocols, um, there, there's ambiguities, and it's uh, better to figure out what those, what those are before you start deploying your products, um, you know, within a state. Um, and we found it to be extremely helpful for um, kind of working through those, those details before we, we, we get it out there, and so that hopefully we can uh, work better uh, with a multitude of companies once we get into that situation. So. Um, uh, we would just encourage a company to uh, to join the the, uh, the the conference so that um, they can deal with the issues now as opposed to uh, later when when we're everybody's in production and, and and making changes is much more difficult. One of the focus that we had from uh, from my company point of view was that um, we wanted to find as many bugs as possible in our software. Uh, especially, you know, minor little things that doesn't work with one vendor or minor little things that works with this vendor but doesn't work with this vendor and try to resolve those. So I believe we have done a lot of progress in that. I mean, I was able to find a lot of bugs, not a lot, but significant amount of good bugs that we could fix in our software. In the day uh, and a half that we've been here, uh, it is turning out to be an excellent event. We have some of the best minds in the industry, uh, you know, our competitors, our colleagues in the industry. Um, it's mostly engineering personnel. Um, I have uh, with us for our company, our senior software developer, Phil Dyer, and uh, there are many other engineers uh, collaborating. And that's the key word, it's a collaboration to ensure that the I3 standard um, is the most comprehensive um, standard that uh, can be made available to the public safety industry for emergency communications. Everybody, uh, you know, they, they, they leave their, uh, um, you know, uh, not necessarily their pride at the door, but, um, you know, they, they check their, their pride at the door, they walk into the event, and it's, it's, everybody's on the same page. And there, there really isn't any, from what I can tell, any, you know, competition going on. Uh, but amongst the vendors. It's really just engineers working with other engineers uh, to, to try to get things um, to working. And, and in order to get, that, get to that place, um, we have to have consensus about uh, how you look at RFCs, how you look at the NINA documentation, and, and what you read uh, into those documents. Uh, having consensus is an important part of the, uh, the collaboration and uh, interoperability. An important goal of the ICE program is to provide relative feedback on standards to appropriate NENA technical committees. ICE Force Steering Committee Chair Nate Wilcox explains. So the steering committee has representation from all of the industry organizations and the steering committee is really what drives the process to be able to kick off the, the ICE events. Once we kick off an ICE event we determine you know, when it's going to happen um, and, and what the theme of the event is going to be. Um, then we, we build a list of vendors that could possibly participate. We announce to the vendor community that we're having this event and then they determine uh, what their participation is going to be on the planning committee. Every company that participates in an event has a seat at the planning committee. Support from leading universities has been an important component of ICE. As we look at the next uh, generation 911 initiatives and really what has brought us to this point, you know, it, it, we have to recognize the, the value of our academia institutions, including Texas A&M University and Columbia University uh, and others as, as we go forward uh, to, to fully uh, be able to uh, benefit from the, the, the resources the, uh, and the uh, uh, energy uh, of those institutions. Texas A&M University is honored to have been a part of the UNENA NG911 process since 2004. Our initial work involved work with the Department of Commerce involving proof of concept testing and later revolved into yet another project involving U.S. Department of Transportation. More recently, the involvement of both Columbia University and Texas A&M University with the ICE or the interop testing uh, has been 
continuation of that process, and more recently, the Illinois Institute of Technology has joined in with us. The next generation 911 is important to the safety of citizens across the country. Members of the national organization discuss the importance of participating in ICE. Actually, the number of vendors involved has increased, I think, just about every time we've had an ICE event. Uh, so it's really very uh, useful to the vendors themselves in terms of being able to get their designs and products uh, oriented the way they need to be and uh, to make sure they do work with what other vendors do uh, and the products they've produced and that we can eventually end up with a national and internationally interoperable next generation 91 emergency communications process. You're doing yourself a disservice by not participating in it simply because what you can get out of it and uh, you know seeing what the other people are doing and and being involved in it directly I wouldn't understand why somebody wouldn't want to be involved in it so there's uh, an awful lot of work that has to has to go on for uh, for next gen to become uh, become the, the real deal but uh, we're trying, and uh, and everyone everyone here that uh, at the ice event uh, are, are very interested in seeing the same things we are. So we we do we we do these things uh, in order to uh, make things better for for the, the the dialing public out there. In the end, while ice is extremely important to the safety of the general public, it is also good business sense. There's no other place that I know of that you can come into a room with 15, 10, 15, 20 other vendors and actually test your product with them. Uh, also, uh, it gives you an opportunity to be able to, to tweak your product if you, know, you uncover uh, areas that maybe you're, you're lacking in your own product. It gives you that opportunity to do that. And so it's, it's really a... Um, really beneficial for not only your own company, but for the industry as a whole. Uh, there is a tremendous amount of hidden value to these ICEs uh, beyond just um, uh, testing current versions of, of software and or equipment. Uh, it's the contacts you make with your competitors to be able to truly work and, and together and, and come up with an interoperable world. ICE helping businesses work cooperatively and collaboratively to ensure the quality of 911 services in a next generation world. Public safety and emergency services demand this, and lives depend on it.